I'm crossing near the uh, one of the most famous buildings in uh, Serbia in uh, Belgrade if you know what is this building please leave a more leave a comment down there Last minutes in Belgrade, I can enjoy the morning traffic, which is not really enjoyable. Good thing I'm leaving uh, early in the morning, the time is 7.30. I don't want to think what it's going to look like in a few hours. So uh, let's get out of this beautiful big city. It was a very pleasant stay. I need to fill the tank because I'm short with the gas. And then uh, I will tell you more about the road that I'm going to take. Mostly will be on highways, uh, as uh, otherwise if I will take the nationals, it will take me something like seven hours to get to my destination and then I don't want to ride that much today. It's time for a short break. I've been riding for one hour on the highway and it was so boring. The good news is that the weather is perfect, something like 18, 19 degrees. Anyway, I'm something like 50 or 40 kilometers away from the border. Hopefully, it will be an easy pass. Hello! How are you? Passport? Passport. Thank you. That was easy. Let's see the Croatian side. Europeans, non-Europeans. I'm a non-European. Two lines for cars. Why is everybody standing here? I guess they know something that I don't. Crossing the border was easy. I had no problems with my insurance. My passport was okay. The local currency is Kona. Although they are, Croatia is officially in the European Union, they still using, are using their own currency. Welcome Croatia! Let's go! I think I had enough highways for today. So uh, let's see what happens if I uh, take off this boring road. So, bye bye highways! Frankly, I have no idea where I am. 
It looks like a small Croatian village and it's really nice. David, where are you taking me? Looks like we are going to cross a river, something big graveyard over here. Spachva. This is nice. Looks like we did a good choice, a good decision by taking off the highway. Now we get to see the countryside of Croatia and I must tell you it's lovely. This place where I'm riding now, 1000 years ago, nothing happened. Looks like nobody lives here. So as I am strolling along the Croatian countryside in low speed and high spirits, um, I think it's time to ask you the question of the day. And the question of the day is whether you guys prefer to travel alone or uh, with company. The question is rather simple and I don't think that I have a true answer for this. Oh, that's a lovely old car. Anyway, if you are traveling alone, you are mastering your own time. You can come and go whatever you please. You don't have to wait for nobody. Uh, you do whatever you want. You go whatever you want, which is nice. But on the contrary, when you're traveling in company or in a group, there is this element of sharing the uh, adventures, uh, stories, jokes, and some people might feel more secure because somebody is watching your back. If uh, something goes wrong, you can always turn and get some help from your friends. I'm something like 100 kilometers away from the city of uh, Sisak, which is my destination for today. When I will get there, I will tell you more about the city and why it is uh, important. But uh, the more I go west, the less I can see the countryside because uh, you, all you see those houses, they are from the right side, the left side, the fields are just behind them. So when you ride, you just don't really see the fields and uh, it makes you feel like you are riding in an endless long neighborhood of small houses although it's nice but it's not really fun and there are no many, the road is quite boring and i think that uh, i had enough of this countryside i'm going to cut it and uh, go a bit to the highway this way i will be able to save one hour drive Finally off the highway, I was uh, surprised by the rain, you can hear the thunders. Luckily, I managed to put my raincoat on time. I have something like 20 minutes to my destination. Hopefully, I won't become soaked. my room in Sisak actually it's a it's an apartment in somebody's house but it's nice <laughs> To Starigrad, the uh, old castle of Sisak, 
and uh, hopefully soon enough we'll be able to see it according to my maps it says that this place is closed right now but hopefully we'll be able to get a glimpse of it for, at least from the outside it's a lovely morning here in Sisak temperatures are like 17 degrees it's going to be a sunny day and I think that I arrived at the castle I'm standing here near the castle of Sisak which is a well preserved middle ages castle that was uh, became very famous here in, uh, in Croatia because of the battle uh, against the Turks that were defeated here in 1500 something. I will use this castle in order to uh, say a few words about Sisak. Sisak is a very well known city in Croatia actually they have the largest oil refinery of the country when I was riding on my way over here I was riding beside it and it's huge but Sisak has dark history as well because in this place there was the concentration camp of children for Jews and Romani people so uh, during World War II this was a very terrible place the camp does not exist anymore so that's it for Sisak. I'm leaving this place and I'm going to Slovenia, uh, partly highway. So uh, I will turn off the camera. If there will be something interesting, I will let you know. Have a nice day. We just passed the uh, Croatian border, that was no problem. She just uh, checked my passport. Now we are online to get to Slovenia. Thank you. Where can I buy a vignette? That was easy. Well, David, we are in Slovenia officially now. The only thing we need to take care of is to uh, that we need to buy a vignette and then yeah, I can see the, it's here we need to buy a vignette for you and uh, so you can ride in the highways so David has a, his own vignette we got one for a week for something like seven euros which is fair price i guess and now we can go anywhere they don't give you a sticker anymore so uh, welcome slovenia we are here i'm going to uh, spend a, a day and a half in ljubljana i have some things to arrange and uh, on Thursday, the big surprise will come. So, uh, let's go. This is nice. Off the highway, into the countryside, there is a great change. Oh, there is a castle up there. And a lake. How cool is that? Okay. It's very clean here, very green, a bit hilly, which is very nice for a motorcycle. Oh. Slovenia is beautiful. Uh, 
and uh, I think that we will have great time here don't you think well while you are waiting uh, for the red light to change because they are working here on the road you can certainly uh, step up and uh, take a small prayer or something well for the believers I mean and if you are not a believer just like me you just stand here and wait remember we've been to Slovenia some 10 years ago and we did a lot of off-roading on a car in a car but so That was refreshing. How pretty is that? It's like in a fairy tale. Amazing. Unlike North Croatia, which is highly populated, Slovenia isn't. So when you're riding from one village to another over here, you have enough green space to ease the eyes, which is very nice. Took a short rest over here in the field. It was very nice. I was just looking at the audiometer and I noticed that uh, David and I, we did something like uh, 1500 kilometers since the, uh, we started that trip and uh, it is, uh, it's nice, went faster than I thought. I think that I have a problem. Uh, during this week I discovered that I rather like traveling like this and I don't know what will happen next and I will have to uh, go back in something like two months it will be a problem I think maybe I will have to start thinking about my next trip David and I we are officially in Ljubljana very close to our uh, home for tonight something like four minutes away After some riding in the streets of Ljubljana, David and I arrived at our destination. It was time to rest. So, if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below and I will see you in my next episode.